This is the XK A600, and it's a high-tech, high-quality scale RC model of the classic overpowered workhorse, the DHC2 de Havilland Beaver bushplane. Now, I usually like to make my own RC aircraft, but one thing that I'm not very good at is making really small, good-looking scale models, and the Beaver actually is one of my favorite aircraft. I took this video of this 1958 Beaver in Lake Chelan just two days ago. It had just returned from a charter flight from Seattle. And here's a picture of that same plane when it started life in the Army. I also flew a Cessna 182 aircraft from California to Alaska last summer. And I saw a lot of beavers up there in Fairbanks and Talkeetna and the Yukon territories of Canada. The A600 comes well packaged and in a rather cool looking box. The wing is separate and comes in its own foam sleeve. I'm so far very impressed with how this thing looks. It had two individual servos pre-installed for each aileron. It comes with a neat digital transmitter, a LiPo battery balance charger, this bag of hardware which includes an extra propeller, the wing struts, landing gear, and even this little screwdriver. The battery is a 300 milliamp hour 2S LiPo with a standard size balance plug. And of course the main airplane fuselage with all the electronics pre-installed. The empennage has awesome detail and build quality. And the direct drive 2500 kV brushless outrunner motor in the front has a very tight and snappy feel to it. The receiver is also a fancy flight controller with gyroscope sensors. There are two individual servos for the elevator and the rudder, and a separate ESC mounted next to the motor. Under the plane is a battery bay with a snap-on cover. It comes with a very nice little manual with lots of illustrations and good information. But seriously, how hard would it be to have a native English speaker proofread these things first? Pretty much all you have to do for assembly is put the wing, the wing struts, and the landing gear on. To put the wing on, first you have to plug the two aileron servos into the little Y harness. And then, the tab on the front of the wing slides underneath the front window area of the fuselage. Then the back of the wing gets screwed down with the one included screw. The struts just simply snap onto these ball joints, and the landing gear just slips in place like this. The only thing that you need to provide is four AA batteries for the transmitter. The transmitter has a very nice little interactive display, and it even shows you what controls should be moving with different control inputs. When first powered up, the airplane is by default in what they call 6G mode, which is basically like an autopilot. You just simply direct it where to go. It has auto level and it basically flies itself. It's just short of an autopilot. So if we go like this, control services automatically move to the position that will level the plane. And so when you turn it upside down, it's full deflection because it's trying to roll itself back over. If you switch just past the, night, or the upside down point, then it'll say, oh, now this is faster. And then if you go up, the elevator pitches that way to try and pitch the airplane. And then if you find yourself in this attitude, it'll try and pitch down. And then same with the rudder, it's trying to turn it back left, now it's trying to turn it back right. The cool thing is that when you apply aileron stick, it gives it a little bit of rudder. So a certain amount of stick equates to a certain amount of bank. And so now the ailerons are neutral. Uh, the position on the stick doesn't refer to roll rate, it refers to bank angle. So this is going to make it bank this much, this is going to make it bank this much, and it's going to hold this bank angle and it's going to keep a coordinated turn with the rudder, which is really cool. And if you give it rudder only, it'll basically do a flat turn. If it starts to do this, it'll automatically keep the wings level. And so it does flat turns and keeps the wings level for you. And if you do aileron and rudder together, that's how you really get it to turn fast. Otherwise, just banking is just a little bit slow. 6G mode works so well that I don't have any problem letting inexperienced pilots fly the plane, as long as it's not too windy. It's so quiet in the middle. If you push down on the right stick, you switch into what they call 3D mode, which is almost like flying manually, except the plane still has gyroscopic stabilization. You can do aerobatics in 3D mode, but I actually really wish that they had completely manual mode instead, because the stabilization makes it kind of hard to fly. But if you find yourself losing control or disoriented, you can just click on the right stick again and put it back into 6G mode, and it will very quickly level itself again. Because the Beaver is a heavy lifting workhorse, I decided to see if this little model can carry a Mobius. So yes, yes it can, but just barely. Now let's put an FPV camera on top. Where are we? Oh, there we are. Hello. Ah. 
This plane can handle some wind, and it can be very fun to hover it just in front of your face, but it's an absolute dream to fly in smooth air, and I think it'll last you much longer and you'll have a better time if you save it for those really good days. I have had quite a few crashes and a couple repairs, but after several months of having this thing, it still flies great. This model was provided to me by GearBest.com, and one thing that I really appreciate is how many spare parts are available online. You could basically build yourself a whole new model just from the spare parts. I'll put special links to everything down below. Thanks for watching.